implementation of the 1985 Over the Rhine Urban Renewal Plan in one of Cincinnati's most prominent neighborhoods demonstrates the significance of urban renewal nationally because it represents the ways in which socioeconomic forces can revitalize an urban landscape and how these forces impact the people who live in them. In this short film, I will recount the details of the 1985 Over the Rhine Urban Renewal Plan in Cincinnati in order to shed light on the many ways in which historic neighborhoods are being revitalized with new commercial and residential spaces in order to stimulate economic growth in areas that are becoming increasingly desirable to live in. This little known history of urban planning is relevant today because areas like Over the Rhine encapsulate the socioeconomic trends that are taking place in our country that are bringing popularity back to the city and then how that affects the people who previously lived in these areas. In order to understand why the city planners of Cincinnati were led to implement an urban redevelopment program for Over the Rhine, we need to observe the historical context in which the need for this program arose. The revolutions of 1848 and the German states saw the immigration of thousands of Germans to the United States. Here, they settled into the outskirts of the city of Cincinnati in a neighborhood north of the Ohio River, where rent was cheap and readily available for relatively poor immigrants. German immigrants continued to pour in over the Rhine, and by 1860, the neighborhood was a well-established part of the city. Breweries began to flourish, nightlife was at its peak, and residents of Over the Rhine experienced a period of great economic success, as well as increased tourism throughout the remainder of the 19th century. This growth carried over at the turn of the century, and the start of World War I saw a shift in production to manufacturing wartime goods. Following the war in 1920, local breweries and nightlife districts suffered a massive economic setback when the nationwide prohibition of alcohol was implemented. Soon thereafter, the onset of the Great Depression would only further the economic setback being experienced by over the Rhine residents. At the onset of World War II, production again focused on manufacturing wartime goods, which helped boost the economy once again. Following the war, the prohibition of alcohol was lifted, and breweries began to saw resurgence in production and economic growth. In the 1960s, Cincinnati began constructing the Mill Creek Expressway, which is now part of I-75. This resulted in the eventual destruction of a lot of African-American housing on the West End, which caused them to spill over into Over the Rhine, where housing options were similar to that of which they came. As a result, Over the Rhine became a much more diverse neighborhood. Soon, race riots in Avondale and Over the Rhine were triggered by racist sentiments that stemmed from the Cincinnati Strangler, an African-American man who was guilty of raping and murdering six white women. During this time, over the Rhine wound up losing nearly 84% of its white population, and the once desirable neighborhood became the face of poverty and blight in Cincinnati. Cities need old buildings so badly it is probably impossible for vigorous streets and districts to grow without them. For really new ideas of any kind, no matter how ultimately profitable or otherwise successful some of them might prove to be, there is no leeway for such chancy trial error, and experimentation in the high overhead economy of new construction. Old ideas can sometimes use new buildings. New ideas must use old buildings. The condition of Over the Rhine was deteriorating, and soon city officials took notice of the events taking place within their community. As a result, they made it a priority to use city housing dollars to develop, preserve, and maintain housing for people with low to moderate income. The first step to implementing this plan began with identifying areas of over the Rhine they found blighted or in need of structural repair. After this was completed, city officials had to determine which buildings could be salvaged and which ones had to be demolished. It is important to keep in mind that city officials maintained that it was of their utmost interest to salvage as many of the buildings as possible. While many of the buildings had obviously fallen into a state of disrepair, and cannot be salvaged, it was extremely important to save as many buildings as possible so that the structural and historical identity of the neighborhood was preserved. City officials 
also made it a priority that none of the redevelopment should result in the reduction of low-income housing stock or the gentrification of existing residents. The next question city planners were faced with was the various land uses and how they would use these redeveloped spaces to create something that was cohesive with existing and surrounding spaces. They aim to create a balance between commercial, residential, and recreational spaces so that they flowed naturally amongst one another. With all of these plans in place, Over the Rhine slowly began to develop and old spaces that had been neglected previously were being revitalized. In order to track this progress, we will narrow our focus on the Finley Market District of Over the Rhine. The Finley Market, established in 1852, is the state's oldest continually operated public market. Today, it continues to draw large crowds and contributes greatly to the economic success of Over the Rhine. Because of its historical significance and the volume of revenue that it generates for the neighborhood, city planners wanted to continue to build off of what had already been established. The most prominent feature of this area is the market itself. Extending from this focal point, the buildings immediately surrounding the market that looked down upon it were to be used for community commercial mixed use development. Typically, the first floor is utilized as a place for commercial use with residential spaces above. The intent of this mixed land use is designed to reinforce the open marketplace atmosphere by keeping the space open so that the public can flow in and out of the small businesses on the ground level. People generally believe the Over the Rhine Urban Development Plan was a great success and the influx in business and investment within the neighborhood exceeded the expectations. While most of the goals of this urban redevelopment plan were achieved, there are still concerns regarding the actual success of whether or not city planners were able to prevent the reduction in the low-income housing stock. Since the plan was enabled, residential and commercial stocks rose, which naturally drove out persons of low income because they could no longer afford to live in an increasingly desirable space. This has impacted immediately surrounding areas due to the increased number of low income families being pushed into these neighborhoods. While we can certainly revel at the amazing transformations that took place in Over the Rhine, it is important to continue observing all the ways in which it impacts those residents and how we can learn from their displacement in order to avoid it in the future. Over the Rhine, a name that used to be synonymous with crime and dilapidated housing, now captures the imagination of an entire city. The transformation the city has made in order to preserve the buildings and uses of land around it make it one of the greatest comeback stories in urban redevelopment history. With careful planning and intent to preserve old buildings so that they could use new ideas, City officials were able to successfully enable a transformation that would completely rearrange the entire perception of Cincinnati's inner city and restore hope in an area that many had written off entirely. From rags to renaissance, Cincinnatians will be able to enjoy over the Rhine and all of its beautiful transformations for several generations to come.